Hi, I'm David Meyer, an editorial director of CRM Magazine, Speech Tech Magazine, and SmartCustomerService.com. Joining me here today at our CRM Evolution Speech Tech Customer Service Experience event are Volker Hildebrand, who's the Global Vice President at SAP Hybris, and Samir Patel, who is the uh, Global uh, Senior Vice President yes. at, uh, at, at Hybris as well. Yes. SAP Hybris. So, gentlemen, thank you for joining us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having us. Uh, so earlier today in your discussion, you talked about this change happening uh, within enterprises, uh, with their customers, and I wanted to talk a little bit about that. Um, what, I what is that change that's happening, and, and why, do business, wh why do businesses have to react to it? Right, I think, I think there's, there's two things. So one, as we all know, um, the innovation in, in technology, internet, mobility, social media, et cetera, um, this technology clearly is changing the game for everyone, right? It changes the way we live, the way we work, the way we buy, the way we sell. And, um, and at the same time, uh, we're, we're also seeing that customers are actually changing the rules of engagement in parts by leveraging some of these technologies. And now the big question is, okay, the game's changing, the rules are changing. What, if you are an organization, what do you need to do to not only keep up with it, uh, but maybe uh, leverage this as an opportunity to better engage with your customers? Now when you say the game's, are ch the game's changing, the rules changing, so uh, let's talk a little bit more about that. What, what, what do you mean by that? Is it that customers are more in control? Is it that customers, the relationships with customers, the dynamics of that relationship is changing? Is it that uh, you can no longer think about the customer in uh, the, the old way, the traditional way, right. where you've got a, a system of record and all the information is in that record, right. you've got to think beyond that. Well, tell us a little bit about what you mean, how, how that's changing for the business. Well, I think the one thing that, that's changing is you're absolutely right. Customers are more empowered than, than ever before. And, and sometimes it's also said they're, they're in control. I don't think they're always fully in control. Right. As we all know as consumers, right. sometimes right. We'd, we'd like to be in right. control, but we're, but we're not. And maybe that's actually part of it. How can, how can organizations embrace that uh, desire of customers, consumers, to actually be in control and, and support this? Many times we're, we're talking in CRM about the single view of the customer. How about providing customers and consumers with a single view of everything that is going on with the organization, with the company, right? right? That's a slightly different perspective and it's, it's almost like empowering the empowered customer even more, but the, uh, uh, with that, pretty much um, um, also being more um, respectful with regards to what customers are expecting today and what's convenient for them, what's, right. uh, what's easy for them, how they want to do their own customer journey, whether it's before they buy something or after they buy something. You want to add something? Somewhere? Yeah, I mean, I think, I think those are all right, valid points. I think the second thing too is, um, the nature of products that we're buying is radically changing as well, right? So we are, whether we like it or not, we're starting to buy massively more useful products as they're digital in nature, but they're far more complex. And so when you start to buy products that are more complex, the nature of how we support the customer during the sale predictively mm -hmm. through the process after it yeah. is wildly different from buying analog products. And so, you know, I think we have to understand, and as Volker said, respect the pace at which those customers want to go through that journey mm -hmm. and help them understand it. And I think that is fundamentally going to shift uh, and put serious stress, actually, on the monolithic architectures that we've had so far around systems of engagement versus, uh, versus systems of record. We're going to have to rethink that, that mix up. What does that mean to a company when they have to think about systems of engagement versus systems of record? Right. Uh, you know, when you consider things like the, just the new way company customers buy the yeah. new the, the social media they're they're you know uh, they're they're looking at peer to peer groups yeah. they're buying in different yeah. realms they, you know they're not yeah. just it's not just showing up with cash in hand to yeah. a store and, and making a purchase yeah. they're purchasing in different ways so what does that mean yeah. understanding the customer uh, with with a view toward systems of engagement versus systems of record I think there's two things one is these are artificial man-made distinctions first, yeah. right? You know, no customer woke up every day and said, I'm going to head over to the system of record and the <laughs> engagement, right? So it's kind of inside a baseball to some degree. Right. Um, 
if you, and it's a, it's a system-centric view of the world that we as technology builders have created over the last 20 years. And it's fine, right? There was a state of technology, this is how we got here, it's not a ding against anyone. Right. But the customer is looking at it from her vantage point right. and saying, um, you know, there are different ways that I want to learn and therefore engage right. through that purchasing process, right? So systems of engagement are actually purchasing systems in a way, if you think about it, because most of the vetting is happening on those systems that prevent a customer from dropping off right. or from not converting, right? So we have to stop thinking of just the place where I see a cash register and a catalog as the system of record where I buy. I'm sorry, the system of record where you buy is from the time that a customer begins engaging wherever that is, right. all the way through to a, in, your, in, in the case of a seller, a repurchase. Right? Where is that? Sometimes it's a search engine. Sometimes it's Facebook. Sometimes it's another social media site. Sometimes it's your distributor because you sell indirectly. Yeah. How are you bringing the experience and the knowledge required to make that sale to them on their own terms mm -hmm. um, based on the sophistication of the products that you're selling? Yeah. Right? Um, you can't do that by no matter how much you spend, just integrating these monolithic systems of engagement or record that were never designed with the view of the customer, right. ever, right? You have to understand how you stitch together just the right amount of service, just the right amount of customer engagement and commerce that kind of match, map it, maps the, 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 uh, the preferred way in which the customer wants to traverse that journey, right? right? right. So and it doesn't, it doesn't mean that a uh, system of records are no longer of, of any use, right? right? You, you still want to have access to the transactional history, Absolutely. the buying the history customer of the customer, wants access to et cetera. That. Even the customer, exactly. So you, you still need to have it, but uh, you need to augment it with, uh, with these uh, systems of engagement that, that simply have a different purpose, yeah. right? It's not about um, automating or recording transactions, whether it's a service request or an order purchase, um, but is, is really about uh, how do I facilitate the, the customer journey across all these different channels and engage with the customer in the moment when it matters to him right. or her versus when it fits into my internal kind of process chain.